Not a question about passing. It's a transition story about somebody who's unhappy about something in their life and they figure out the way to make themselves happy. A moment from the new film, No Ordinary Man. Now it's the story of Billy Tipton, a revered jazz musician, a trans man, and LGBTQ icon. He rose to fame in the 40s and 50s, but it's unlikely that you know his whole story. Eli is back to give us some thoughts on this. Uh, yes, unlikely we know the story. In many cases, hadn't even heard of him. So let's talk about this. Um, yesterday was uh, International Transgender Day, a uh, day mm. of visibility. Uh, what can you tell us about the man behind No Ordinary Man? Yeah, so appropriate that this is coming out uh, the same week as that day. And and like you, John, I, I had no idea. And this is a fascinating, moving story about Billy Tipton, as you mentioned, jazz musician, recording artist, played piano, saxophone, recorded a few albums, born in Kansas City, lived in Spokane, Washington, never really broke big. There's one of his albums, but he worked from about the 1940s all the way into the 70s. When he died in 1989, the world learned that he was born a woman. And the simple version that a lot assumed is that Billy dressed as a man just as a way to break in, as a way to excel in the music industry, in jazz at the time. But Billy's story is so much more than that to the trans community. He was an icon, he was a pioneer. He met a woman, he married, they adopted children. But because of the circumstances of his death in 1989, at the time of tabloid television, Sally Jesse Raphael and Oprah, I mean, they did the, the circuit, his wife and son were on TV and the story became a sensation and really was exploited for thrills and headlines. But I, I think this is before we really had the language to understand what Billy had gone through. Now, the film is co-directed by Chase Joint and Ashlyn Ching Yi. They're both Canadian directors. Chase is trans himself. But their way, John, of exploring Billy's life is really innovative. Now, you'll see there are talking heads, trans authors, activists, academics, even Billy's uh, wife and son. You'll hear from them. But there's also trans masculine actors who were brought in to audition to play vignettes, short scenes, snapshots from Billy's life. And so we see these various trans men auditioning to be Billy. Let me give you a, a brief sense of what that's like. Let's take a look. I'm auditioning for the role of Billy. I'm here for the role of Billy. Auditioning for Billy. This is Billy. How would I summarize the story of Billy Tipton? He was a transmasculine jazz musician. When I encountered Billy Tipton, that was the first time I encountered transmasculinity. Those of us in this generation, we are in a much different place than Billy Tipton. We are public in a way that so many trans people before us haven't been able to be. So Eli, let's talk about this technique. And we're seeing this in documentary films in general, the way they're breaking down barriers to tell stories, mm. especially uh, from the past. So what about this technique of using trans actors to uh, explore the story? You know, I think what Chase and Ashling have come up with is genius because what that technique does is capture that sense of fluidity. Like it's not just the recreations, it's the idea that there was no one single idea of what Billy did, about the choices he made, just like there isn't a single trans experience. It's a spectrum. And so seeing how a range of actors and trans men chose and choose on camera to interpret those moments feels so appropriate. And then you also hear these actors in the addition room, in the green room, talking about the power of discovering someone who came before them. It makes it so real, especially with certain actors like Marquise Vilsit. Now, he's one of these actors who comes in for the, the audition. You see him in the trailers with that yellow t-shirt. He just seemed to click. He just seemed to have this kind of deep, intuitive connection an understanding of what Billy had gone through. Let's take another look. I'm Billy Tipton. My band is here for the... Sorry, I, I wasn't expecting you to be here. Well, uh... same to you, buddy. 
There's a whole history of media where you see people and you don't realize that they're trans, and then something gives it away. And more often than not, it's the voice. My voice still squeaks. It keeps dropping, so I can't get used to it. I still try to make my voice sound deeper all the time. <laughs> There's so many layers to this. Uh, what we just watched there, that's Professor Stefan Pennington. And he talks about at one point a connection between jazz music and the trans experience. You think about it, the idea of improvising with what you have, like Billy, performing and navigating the world with the body you were given. And the film explores how for too long there were limited options for trans men to be invisible, to conceal or assimilate. The tragedy at the heart of No Ordinary Man is that Billy died in his son's arms, Billy Jr., of an untreated ulcer probably because he was too afraid of going to the hospital, of losing control of his body and his autonomy. So he stayed home and he suffered. And even today in the United States, once again, trans people's access to medical care, the right of physicians to refuse care, that is becoming a political flashpoint. Now, I'll say, I mean, as someone who still had a lot to learn, this film was eye-opening. And what is beautiful about the film is for all the pain that Billy's family suffered, for how his story was covered in the press, the other arc is this personal story of his son, Billy Jr., realizing how his father was someone that the community really looked up to. It's a remarkable piece of storytelling about essentially a man searching for his own happiness. Four and a half stars out of five. Thank you, Eli. You're welcome.